It is no longer a secret that non-governmental organizations, NGOs, and the Arab world in general are founded to compete with the existing systems by garnering the satisfaction of the liberal governments in the United States and Western Europe who finance them. The liberal and neoliberal systems have been for some time now loud in embracing identity rights while excluding economic rights in what is perceived as the third world. They do that because economic rights are exploited for capitalist marketing by creating markets and goods that target the purchasing power of these emerging and transnational identities. They do that through political activists who turn into employees at NGOs playing an imperial cultural role. The cultural field is one of the most important fields the NGOs use to strive globally for the political right to express oneself but not the right to redistribute wealth or to demand democracy politics, but not economic democracy. Today, there are at least 50,000 non-governmental organizations in third world countries receiving more than $10 billion in funding from international financial institutions and from government agencies and local governments in the European Union and the United States of America. Managers of the largest NGOs manage budgets value at $1 million each, with salaries and benefits that can be compared to that of chief executives. This has been evident in the socio-political activism of NGO employees in Lebanon over the past 20 years. Recently, with the spark of October 17th protests in 2019, popular speakers in Lebanon focused their criticism on the Lebanese Central Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, multinational companies, and private banks. Basically, against all those who set the macroeconomic agenda for pillaging Lebanon. However, when the disgraceful impact of structural adjustment policies on pensions and wage workers, peasants, and local businessmen generated massive public discontent, suddenly the NGOs entered the picture. The NGO role in Lebanon was evident in trying to confuse and distort this popular discontent away from a direct attack on the banking power structure and its profits, which avoids the class analysis of imperialism and capitalist exploitation. Welcome to the Mideast stream. I'm Marwa Osman. As part of its foreign policy, the U.S. as an imperial power has been busy financing and supporting overseas religious, social, political, and environmental institutions known as non-governmental organizations to control the exploited people and to deflect their resentment towards conflicts, religious rivalries, and local divisions for the ultimate purpose of regime change. To discuss this issue with us from Beirut is Ali Murad, expert in Middle East politics. Thank you for being with us, Ali. Now, it's no longer a secret that the NGOs are a serious global political and social players operating in rural and urban areas, uh, and it has long been associated with the, laws, uh, with the roles of their uh, financiers, whether in Europe or the United States of America. Now, roles of NGOs have been uh, particularly visible in Lebanon over the past 10 years, um, some have gone as far as actually implicate themselves in the um, current and recent, very recent uh, uprisings uh, in Lebanon known as the Lebanon uh, protests. Now, how much truth are these skeptical roles of the NGOs in Lebanon? Thank you for having me first. Uh, you know, since 2008, you got thousands of NGOs that have been uh, established in Lebanon. Uh, out of uh, those thousands, you got like two or three thousand of those NGOs that are being funded by foreign countries and um, private foundations, uh, basically in the United States and Europe. Um, those um, NGOs have been active uh, politically um, at least since 2015. And uh, since then, uh, they are being active uh, during the, uh, the whole uh, situation in Lebanon that outbroke uh, since the first uprisal in 2015. And now, uh, since the uh, October 17th uprisal, they are in the streets, uh, they are protesting, they are uh, rioting sometimes. Uh, and I believe that um, due to the rhetoric that those NGOs are using, um, there had been some uh, skepti skepticism about 
um, their, uh, you know, their, uh, uh, the stances they are trying to promote uh, dealing with the state, the, the Lebanese state, and even with the relations, the external relations, um, even with the Zionist entity, and, and a lot of, uh, of, uh, of stances that those NGOs have taken since five months now have made a lot of people and um, you know uh, analysts go that uh, those people have been um, acting on behalf of external powers and basically the United States to try to uh, fulfill some targets uh, regarding the uh, status quo in, in, inside Lebanon. And on top of this is targeting the resistance mm -hmm. and uh, trying to promote a uh, stance for normalization between Lebanon and uh, the Zionist entity and, you know, the, the oil uh, and gas uh, dispute regarding the borders. Uh, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, subjects now are being discussed in, in Lebanon that made a lot of analysts uh, analyze and conduct that those NGOs uh, are, are, are fulfilling an, an, a foreign uh, agenda. agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, adding NGOs around the world have become the latest means of transference for the ambitious, educated class, like the academics and the journalists, uh, who have abandoned their previous journeys in activism, whether it's leftist movements or other movements, but simply because they are not hefty in income-wise now. Uh, they have uh, traded all that for a lavish life, life that looks like a life of an executive uh, manager yeah. and uh, it brings them a lot of uh, money and it bringing with them those people have came along and brought with them their organization and uh, maybe oral skills that could get people all around them that could gre group people and especially with uh, populism involved a lot of populism what makes lebanon such a fertile soil for this vast number of ngos uh, you mentioned the leftists. In Lebanon, you, we have a lot of uh, leftist uh, movements that uh, um, used to operate inside Lebanon for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, after the, the collapse of the Soviet Union and the, um, the whole communist uh, uh, camp, um, those movements were like orphans. They, they don't have uh, funders anymore as they used to be. Uh, during the last uh, the, the decades before the 1990, uh, those leftists um, culturally they are um, against some uh, principles that are being adopted by a, a, a majority in Lebanon, and uh, the the, uh, the Western uh, the Western uh, regime, the Western hegemony regime, uh, made use of the corruption inside Lebanon. And um, the, uh, the fact that uh, high percentages and rates of poverty and unemployment taking place in Lebanon since uh, like uh, a decade at least. Uh, so they were recruited, uh, they were penetrated, and they were, uh, and the most dangerous thing, they were manipulated culturally mm -hmm. uh, in a way that they abandoned their uh, leftist and m Marxist uh, ideas and they turned to the opposite, to, to the, the liberal, liberal front. Yeah, the, to the liberal front. And this is the most dangerous thing that took place in Lebanon. And we are talking about um, since 2008, mm -hmm. you got a lot of leftist movements that turned uh, to the opposite, and uh, they are now uh, they are now adopting um, the uh, the neoliberal thoughts and principles. So the Americans, basically, uh, if you are talking about the State Department mm -hmm. and uh, its branches and agencies like the USAID and the uh, the so-called National Endowment for Democracy. Uh, with all its branches, the International Republican Institute, the National Democratic Institute, and the CIP CIPE, they all worked on funding uh, those leftists, ex-leftists, and so on. They, uh, we, 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 got, uh, uh, we moved, actually, from hundreds at the beginning of the last decade now we got thousands of them mm -hmm. in, the, in the streets. Well, but at the same time, Ali, we have a serious business in a country like Lebanon where the majority of the people in Lebanon who follow the resistance axis, they fight 
against, it is the largest group that actually fights against imperialism and Zionism. Yeah. Has the reality of NGOs in a country like Lebanon made it maybe harder to focus on these rules, which are anti-imperialism and anti-Zionism, especially given the fact that we have corruption in our governance as well? Yeah. Has this made it a bit harder for the resistance to operate? First of all, we have to admit that the number one incentive uh, for this is the, uh, the, the corruption uh, that has been governing inside Lebanon. The corruption in the state made the, the, uh, the basis fertile for uh, such penetrations by the U.S. Uh, and its allies inside Lebanon to try to exploit the situation. Uh, so I, I believe that um, uh, the, 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 the circumstances that uh, uh, were um, the, the outbreak that happened in uh, unemployment and uh, the poverty, that was a, a, a big environment for recruiting a, a lot of people uh, to join the civil uh, liberal army mm -hmm. that is being formed uh, not only in Lebanon, uh, f uh, we, you, you got more than a, a Middle Eastern country now. Uh, the Americans are operating civil armies to reach their goal of the change, uh, the regime change. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe th that even uh, uh, if uh, people are uh, are needy and they are protesting in the streets, I believe that the majority of them are are still. Um, um, sincere about their feelings toward imperialism and mm -hmm. Zionism. And we, we saw the, uh, you know, the, uh, a, a, as a, an example, we one saw of like... The, uh, one of the protests with one months, of the tents that was yeah, actually propagating pro-Zionist uh, yeah, uh, terms, if you will, and uh, normalization, logic, yeah. and it was so brought I, down. Yeah, it was brought down by the protesters. So by the protesters I, I, themselves, We have definitely. to be optimistic about... Uh, but but the, the what, what, I've, what yeah. I've noticed in the role of NGOs, in, maybe in Lebanon specifically, because we are directly in, involved with them, or we, we directly see their uh, activism, it appears that they have contradictory roles, especially in politics. On the one hand, they criticize what they uh, refer to as dictatorship and the uh, violation of human rights. But on the other hand, they are in competition with the radical socio-political movements, uh, trying to steer popular movements towards cooperative relationships with the dominant liberal elite, rather than actually fighting back their destructive policy, especially with the banking systems in Lebanon. But to look closer, are these political trends actually really contradictory, or they are complementary here? Well, when you say that uh, the rhetoric of uh, anti-dictatorship and uh, human rights abuses uh, being committed by the regime and the state, um, this rhetoric uh, is being used as a cover mm -hmm. by, the, by those Malin uh, NGOs. Uh, by the way, we are not uh, trying to We're not to talking about local NGOs all, here, all but we are NGOs, talking about yeah. internationally funded NGOs. Exactly. So uh, you, you got a part of those NGOs that are, uh, are being funded by foundations like the George Soros Open Society Foundations, uh, and the Ford Foundation, and a lot of a group of foundations in Europe, those foundations, uh, they are focusing on the cultural aspect uh, to turn those people to, uh, to uh, unknowingly abandon the principles, the cultural principles that govern, uh, govern uh, that has governed since centuries in, in our region. Mm -hmm. So w when we say that, uh, uh, there is a contradictory role. I believe it depends on the agenda of the funder. Mm -hmm. when, when the funder is the U.S. State Department, they have to stick to the agendas that uh, the State Department uh, mm -hmm. uh, imposes on them. Uh, when we are talking about uh, private foundations, those have their own uh, conditions and their own, um, you know, um, orders mm -hmm. that are being ordered uh, uh, to be well, uh, fulfilled. So this, this practically is a very uh, vast and deep uh, issue that we need to discuss yeah. further, inshallah, in other episodes. Thank you very much, Ali uh, Murad, expert in Middle East politics, for talking uh, with us about the role of regime change Thank of you. NGOs. Please stay tuned for our next segment.